we're a little confused right now still about what exactly is going to happen. What is it that lawmakers in the UK want out of a Brexit deal? Why can't they get something done? Well, if, if I knew, well, there's two concerns here. Uh, there's one group, the uh, anti-EU uh, European research groups, so the anti-EU conservatives, uh, they don't like the withdrawal agreement. They don't like, in particular, this backstop that keeps the Irish border open, which means that the whole of Britain would have to stay in a customs union if they don't find another solution. They think that is not real Brexit. That's not a clean cut. And then there's the opposition. They actually, they're fine with this backstop and with the withdrawal agreement. What they don't like is what is called the political declaration on future trade relations. They think Theresa May hasn't negotiated enough. The, the, the future relation isn't close enough. So they're rejecting this because of the lack of close relations with you and the lack of detail in this political declaration. So these two groups come together and vote against the deal, but they can't come together to vote on anything positive, constructive, uh, to f for, for the future. So this problem wouldn't even be resolved if we finally do get a, the deal voted through next week. It sure seems, Christian, that this is not the kind of environment that companies can make plans in. Hence, we're seeing perhaps a slump in sentiment at, the, at, the, at least the corporate level. That is playing out in the UK economy, or is it not? Well, it is. Uh, if you look at business investment, that's been extremely weak, much weaker than even in the Eurozone or certainly in the, in the US uh, last year. We've had four quarters of falling business investment. That is a clear sign that uncertainty is weighing on corporate decisions. At the same time, though, consumers don't seem to be concerned at all. They're keeping uh, their, 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 their spending uh, where it was. They're actually enjoying lower inflation now because of cheaper oil. Uh, the labor market is booming, wage growth is picking up. So the domestic demand from that side is, is very positive, but business investment is down. The combination gives you very low productivity growth. Uh, that's bad for long-term uh, UK growth. But in the short run, the UK looks a little more resilient, in fact, than some of the continental European countries like Germany or Italy, which aren't, shouldn't be affected by Brexit so much. So, so, Christian, where exactly will we see the most impact on the UK economy in the coming months, given this idea that Brexit may not be happening anytime soon? Well, it extends uncertainty, right? Uh, as, as you pointed out, uh, corporates aren't going to make the big decisions, the big investment decisions, the factories, uh, the, the capital the spending that you would hope uh, they would be doing once uncertainty actually fades. At the same time, demand remains there, so they have to keep supplying. Uh, that means we will probably continue seeing uh, hiring. We continue to see a labor market which is very, very tight. We probably see wage growth remaining, remaining high. Once we do have a deal, that may reverse. There may be more business investment coming in. People may be spending more. At the same time, they won't be needing quite as much stuff anymore. Productivity growth which will, will go up. Uh, and that creates a whole sort of tilt in the economy, which the Bank of England will, of course, be watching very closely because at the moment they're looking at the economy with a tight labor market and potentially rising inflation. At that point, they may actually looking at an economy with bigger productivity growth, perhaps less inflationary pressures, more uh, business investment, which gives them a bit of time perhaps to, to make the next move in terms of hiking rates.